Thank you for listening to Nomad's Movie Reviews Podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, and MeWe. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. Know anything about wine? A little. You're a lifesaver. I'm Chris. This guy. Two sudden adventures. Walk of shame. Hey, get away from my car, man. I don't want any problems. Wait, 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 wait! Ah! Ah! Ladies, you're two weeks behind on the rent again. You're not gonna say anything? Explain where you were all night? I saw something on the news. Lisa! It's your roommate. This guy you should probably contact the police. That would be stupid of me. Why? Because I'm the one who killed her. Expecting a package? How's the knee, dude? I do good work, don't I? Everything goes, lover boy. Stripping you down to the studs. All of this was a setup. Now you're catching on. Sky, you are a very naughty girl. It's scary, right? I need all your passwords and security codes. Uh, What's your mother's maiden name? Uh, mother's uh, maiden name. Uh, Are you going to get Chris or you want me to call the police? It's right here. Daddy! Daddy. What did he want? Everything. <laughs> Okay, you're okay. We'll get you out of here. Please state the nature of your emergency. My name is Christopher Decker. There's a woman in my house. She's imprisoning me against my will. She's trying to steal my identity. She, she wants to kill me. She... Thank God you came back, Chris. Thought I might lose you forever. You should have seen the look on your face. I love the dark. Well, who'd you kill? Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 401. Releasing in the US on January 14th in select theaters and on demand is Shattered, a psychological thriller that stars Cameron Monaghan, as a tech millionaire who was seduced by a sexy yet disturbed young woman played by Lily Krug. A femme fatale thriller, sexy and violent in equal measure, Shattered is also the latest film directed by Luis Prieto, who joins me now on the podcast. Luis, I thank you so very much for joining me today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So Shattered is written by David Lowry. Um, He's a veteran screenwriter. He's been around for some time now. He wrote Money Train. He's written... Lakeview Terrace, amongst many other films. What is it about his script for Shattered that really spoke to you uh, to the point that you wanted to make the film as a movie, both as a director and a producer? Well, as you say, David is a fantastic writer. Um, I, I really admire his his work. And when I got a um, when I got the first draft of uh, Shatter, it was really a page turner. It was a script that you couldn't put down. So I really fell in love with the script from the from the very first uh, page, I would say, you know. Uh, it had all the elements of a good thriller, at least the ones that I love. Uh, suspense, surprise, anxiety, excitement, plot twists. Um, you know, it was a roller coaster uh, for the protagonist. And at the same time, it had something very classical about it. It really reminded me of the thrillers of Alfred Hitchcock. Yes. Especially Rear Window. And that resonated very much. Uh, then, you know, other films came to my mind as I was reading, you know, Misery, uh, maybe the most 
you know, thematically closer, like basic instinct or um, or feral attraction. But anyway, there was a lot of elements in the in the script that I felt like, oh, this is this is something really powerful that I want to do. And I was also coming from directing. Um, my previous film was um, Kidnapped with Halle Berry, where mm-hmm. most of the film took place inside of a car. The film is a car chase, and there was something similar in this film where most of it, the big part of the film, takes place in one location in the protagonist's home. So it's sort of like that challenge resonated again on me. And I said, you know what? I'd love to make this this film. And then like things happen in Hollywood, nothing happened for a few years. And then, you know, in February of this year, I got a call from the producers. The film was greenlit. Um, they were ready to shoot it if I was ready. And I was available. And I said, yes. And we went to Montana to shoot the film. So. Yeah, I feel very lucky that, you know, I was able to direct David's script. You mentioned Hitchcock before. Hitchcock, of course, had his his roster of blondes in his movie. You have your blonde in your movie here, portrayed by Lily Krug. Uh, Lily Krug, I should say. Uh, she plays the character of Sky. Sky is such a vital, important character. You've essentially cast a newcomer in that role, though, in Lily. She's done a few roles. Um, but this is really her first kind of leading role. What was it about Lily that really spoke to you that this was the person who was going to play Sky in your movie? Well, as you said, you know, um, Lily is, is an, an incredible actor, but it's not known yet. This is her first lead role. So I think there was something very interesting about casting for the character of Sky, someone that people wouldn't recognize. So you don't have any. Uh, preconceptions about what this actor will bring or will not bring, Mm -hmm. especially the fact her character has a few sides, you know, I don't want to say split personality because it's not that, but she definitely makes you believe that she is one person when in reality she is someone else. So it was really amazing to be able to have uh, someone of the caliber of Lily and also knowing that she was basically going to be discovered for the wider audience in this film, in Shattered, I just feel personally very lucky to be able to say hello. Here is Lily Crew, you know. Also, in the film is John Malkovich. Um, he's also a producer on the movie as well. You know, what's it like working with uh, an actor like that? Um, because you know, he's just such an iconic um, personality, both on and off the screen. I'm sure it would have been a joy for you to work with him. No, I mean it's amazing because I think that. As you said, you know, John is, an, is, is iconic, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's who he is. So the first time you meet John, inevitably you think about everything that comes with him. But then when you actually meet him in person and spend a little bit of time with him, you forget about all that because you just find a genuine human being, extremely generous, uh, incredibly smart and talented like everyone knows um but just like an, an amazing you know person so that you know you forget about everything else and just you just start you know spending time with a you know a great guy you know with uh you know just uh, someone you know one more and in fact he always made you feel not only me the director but everyone else in, in the crew the rest of the actors he treated everyone the same you know like you you really felt that john was just someone just like you you know and that is Mm -hmm. that generosity i think is what it makes everything else even more special the fact that you can be working with such a talented actor that at the same time is such an incredible person it's just uh, amazing it's a gift john of course has played his yeah there has a long very long career of playing madman in his movies, in this in this movie, your mad person is of course played by Lily uh, Sky. Does John give tips to Lily? Does he give like little kind of you know things, tricks of the trade um, in portraying a character like that? Does she t- ask John for advice in regards to portraying a character with, with that type of mental state? Um, I don't think so. Um, not that I remember. Um, maybe in private happened, and I don't know about it. But I think that from the very beginning, well, first of all, from the very beginning, Lily was perfectly prepared for the role. She's incredible. She has an amazing intuition. He did an amazing work preparing her character. And then uh, what John has is also he has an incredible respect for everyone else in the set. 
including in this case Lily, who was obviously the newcomer. So everything that John said to Lily would have been the same that John would have said to, let's say, Frank Grillo or mm-hmm. Cameron Monaghan. You know, there wasn't any, um, you know, different treatment or anything like that. You know, I mean, I just, I mean, you're working with John that is someone very generous. And obviously, if he had an amazing ideas and always he was like that, in a very polite like if it was just a really small note, he would mention it. Like, by the way, what about this? You know, with very soft spoken, almost like, you know, this is not really important, but let me tell you. And uh, you will hear it and it will be like, oh my God, that's, this is such a great idea. So I'm sure that maybe Lily had some insights the same way that I had um, when I was with him. But I guess you are in such a close um, uh, situation that you don't even notice. It's very uh, subtle, everything, you know, with, with John. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by 80s Tees. 80s Tees is an online retailer of licensed t-shirts and pop culture gear from your favorite movies, TV shows, cartoons, video games, comic books, and musicians. Celebrate your inner 80s nerd and click on the link in the show notes below to get the raddest retro t-shirts delivered to your door. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by Loot Crate. Founded in 2012, Loot Crate is the worldwide leader in fan subscription boxes. Loot Crate partners with industry leaders in entertainment, gaming, sports, and pop culture to deliver monthly themed crates, produce interactive experiences in digital content, and film original video productions. No matter what you geek out about, Loot Crate has a subscription box for you. To get your very own exclusive collectibles, apparel, and gear delivered to your door, be sure to click on the link in the show notes below. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is also brought to you by Voodoo. Watch the latest movies and TV shows anytime, anywhere. No subscriptions, no contract. Enjoy stunning quality in up to 4K ultra high definition at home and download and watch on your mobile device as well. To rent and buy from over 100,000 titles or watch thousands of movies free with Voodoo Movies on us, be sure to click on the link in the show notes below. Now, back to the show. This, uh, you know, over 400 episodes in my podcast, I always have firsts so I can ask filmmakers, and I'm going to ask you a first. I don't think I've asked anyone before. Filming scenes involving um, torture, um, characters being tortured on screen, what's that like on the set? How do you kind of create that kind of intense air? Do you have fun with it? Do your actors have fun with it? Do you try to make it really kind of intense? Do you ever, how do you kind of approach approach that scene uh, in, in particular between uh, Lily and Cameron, um, which I don't want to give away too much of it, but let's just say a power drill is involved in it. Well, you know, it's interesting because obviously there is... Um, there are a couple of elements. So once you're faking everything, so there is a whole uh, technicality of achieving things. So they look really real, but yet, you know, they're not real, obviously. Um, so that is always something uh, mind blowing sometimes, complicated, uh, uh, unpleasant, or just, you know, you have to be thinking about too many things rather than the performance because you are operating a driller, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so there are all those elements, and then you have to bring the intensity of the moment that is crazy. So there is always, when you're filming those scenes, there is always an element of a lot of tension, a lot of stress as it's happening, you know, uh, also because there is being some material destruction. So the reset will be complicated, you know, and I don't want to say, obviously I'm talking in a very, with a very technical words, you know what I mean? But yeah, someone is drilling something whatever that might be, and there is probably blood involved, so it's going to be complicated to do the research. So it's very intense in every single sense. But yet when you say cat, there is a sense of relief. Mm -hmm. and You tend to get giggles, probably because it was so brutal what we were doing, that that is kind of like a nervous reaction for most people. Um, Also probably, you know, the satisfaction of like, wow, that really looked real. So interesting enough, um, at least for myself, when I'm filming those scenes, it's more pleasant than when I'm actually cutting those scenes in the editing room. Because mm-hmm. once you are in the editing room, 
is actually really intense and you're not getting any fun out of it, you know? And that is the, the part that remains at the end in the film. So shooting it is actually, it can be fun. Uh, but once you are carrying it, you know, there is no fun anymore. You, you don't remember the, the laughs. You only see the intensity of the moment. You um, said that the location for the filming was in Montana. Where did you find the house? Because the house is the central setting in the movie. Was that a house that was already built that you had to put something together? Where did you find that 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 piece of setting that's so vital to, you, to your movie? Well, once we decided that we wanted to shoot in Montana, and there were many reasons for going then, uh, probably the most important, the beauty of the landscapes, that it felt such a great backdrop for yes. um, the cruelty of our story at times, you know, I wanted to play with the contrast, you know. Uh, and obviously there is a big chunk of the movie also that is happy go lucky, where just all this, everything is perfect and Montana is perfect for that. But it is also very interesting when things start going south, um, that you are still, things are going crazy in a beautiful location. It's sort of like surreal in a way to have that contradiction there. Um, so yeah, so we started looking for a house and it wasn't easy uh, because the house, that is almost a protagonist, also another, not a protagonist, but definitely a character in the movie. It needed to have some specifics. It needed to have some elements for the story to work. So it was challenging. Um, it felt really hard sometimes. For a, We had a couple of days that we felt like we're never going to find this house. Uh, but then we found it and we fell in love with it. And we had very little to do with the house. Um, in the sense that it was perfect. Of course, you say the house is perfect. The structure of the house is perfect. Then we have to empty the whole house and bring our own furniture and bring all the elements that they were specific for the story. But but yeah, even then, uh, it felt like we were very lucky to have found the house. I think something that's really important about the, the movie as well is that our reliance on technology. You know, I remember, Lewis, the, the days before the internet, days before smart devices, now it seems like everyone places their whole life on their smart device. You know, the character of Cameron is this tech billionaire. His whole life is created around apps. It's all whole, whole reliance on his, on his one phone. In many ways, it's kind of scary to think about, isn't it, that it seems like we're all going down that same type of road, isn't it? We're going to have all our, all our information, everything personal, everything business, everything finance placed on these one little devices. I think it's a very scary thing. What do you think of that, Lewis? Well, it, it is pretty scary um, for many reasons, I have to say. And I would point out that the script, it was sort of set up in a world that it was even more technological than what is on the film. Mm -hmm. And we sort of decided to scale back and make it more contemporary. So really the technology that is featured in the film is everyday technology, as you were saying, the smartphones, uh, home security systems, etc. And what you see in this film, and I think this is sort of like the 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 challenge of these technologies that this technology could backfire really fast. We start relying in some things that we think they're all good. And then all of a sudden we discover that they actually could hurt more than be a benefit. And in the protagonist's case, you know, what he thinks is a safe house becomes more of a prison. Uh, and in humanity in general, you know, well, you know, how many hours have we spent in just looking at a screen where we see stuff that is not really interesting whatsoever, as opposed to doing something else, even if it's just looking up, you know, I don't know, out of the window and looking at the landscape or whatever. So, yeah, I think there is a little bit also of that um, in the film, you know, sort of like, a, let's think a little bit about doing it all this. Is this any good? And again, you know, I don't think the film say yes or not. It's just throws the question up there. Um, again, technology could be good or could be bad. It depends. It depends what you do with it. And it is a vital question, and it's done so in a really entertaining way in, in Shattered. And I ask everyone that when January 14th comes along in the US, you check out Shattered in select theaters and on demand. I can highly recommend it, especially for the performance by Lily Krug. I really do think, uh, Louise, that um, she's going to be a huge star, and uh, it's great to see her performance in your movie and congratulations to you and best of luck with the film's release. Thank you so much. I, I personally also believe this is going to be a huge start. She, she has it. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews, podcast interviews and exclusive content. Also, if you would like to request a review and support my work, please join my Patreon via the link in the description below.